I think it's every parent's worst nightmare that a child goes before you. The idea that someone can essentially disappear without a trace, I think is kind of a counterintuitive thought for people to have. It's the story of 21-year-old Kelsey Schelling, who went missing in 2013, and her mother, Laura Saxton's eight-year-long search for justice. Her family is pleading for your help. We are doing everything in our power to find our missing loved one. Kelsey grew up in the tiny farm town of Holyoke, Colorado. It's a carefree, happy childhood shared with her brother, Colby. She's just always been a little firecracker. But as Kelsey enters her teen years, the family is rocked when Doug and Laura divorce. The split of our parents certainly had an impact on both of us. She ended up in the hospital for several days, and it was pretty scary. She was on antidepressant pills, and she ended up taking like three of them. I mean, I thought we were going to lose her at that point. Kelsey gets her life in order, moving on to Northeastern Junior College in Sterling, Colorado. She wanted to um, get a degree in psychology. I think in her heart, she wanted to work with children. And for a while, carefree Kelsey is back. Then she meets Dante Lucas. It was a big deal that she was dating Dante. He was part of the basketball team. They were kind of the popular kids and everything. When did you first meet him? I never met him. I saw him play basketball a couple times. He was not committed to her by any means. He would play with her heart. I could definitely see some bubbliness fading out as he broke her spirit. Dante and Kelsey date on and off while they're at school. After leaving Northeastern Junior College, Kelsey eventually moves to Denver, where she lands a job. Dante moves back to Pueblo. When did she start going out with Dante again? Over the holiday time frame, November, December, he would stay with her, but then he'd go back to Pueblo sometimes. Were you worried that he would come back and what that would do to her? Absolutely. She didn't want that to happen to her again because she knew the kind of person that she became when she was with him. But around the holidays, Kelsey has a surprise for her family. She's pregnant. Just told her, I will support you. It's going to be OK. She was happy. Did she tell you anything about Dante's reaction? She said he was mad, very angry. On February 3, 2013, Dante asks Kelsey to come visit him in Pueblo. But she says no. And they continue to fight over text. Just before 3 AM, Kelsey texted Dante, you don't have to be in a relationship with me. You don't have to marry me. You don't have to have a happy little family with me. You don't have an obligation to me. You're good. Don't worry. Good night. Lucas's response to that was, oh, I know all of that. Thanks for stating that for me. The next day, Kelsey visits the doctor, who confirms her pregnancy. What did you think when you saw the baby? I was happy. I knew that she was happy. That morning, Kelsey told Dante that she had finished her appointment and that her due date was September 13th. Lucas's response to that was cool. He asked her to skip work and come to Pueblo. She texted him, I'm not going to come get you so we can fight all day. He texted back, I don't want to fight at all. I want to give you this. She writes back, give me what? He says, just wait and see for yourself. You probably wouldn't believe me if I told you anyway, so you can see for yourself. So Kelsey decides to drive to Pueblo after work that night. She and Dante plan to meet at a local Walmart. She arrives at 10.20 PM. And after waiting for almost an hour, Dante is still not there. So the two decide to meet near Dante's grandmother's home, where he was staying at the time. The last confirmed message from Kelsey was sent at 11.18 PM. She was asking Dante, where are you? I've been here for over an hour just waiting. The next day, Kelsey doesn't show up for work. And over the next several days, family and friends grow worried. Kelsey's not answering phone calls. And they say her text messages just don't sound like her. I called Doug, her dad, and said, you know, something is wrong. Kelsey's family drives to her apartment in Denver, but there was no sign of her. They eventually call the police, who reach out to Dante. He was telling me that he had seen her and had talked with her and spent time with her more recently than any of her family members, any of her friends. 
After I got off the phone, I did have a sinking feeling in my stomach. Denver police turned the case over to the Pueblo police. When Dante is brought in for questioning, he denies a serious relationship with Kelsey. She came out of Pueblo, and we're talking, whatever. You know, we ended up, she ended up, you know, didn't matter or whatever. Dante says Kelsey slept in her car in Pueblo. Then he met up with her the next morning, and they stopped at Walmart before she headed back to Denver. She went to go get uh, some snacks, like something to eat, because she was hungry. And then came back out, we ended up talking. And then she ended up telling me, like, get out of the car at Walmart. And she didn't want to take me home. So I just left from Walmart and started walking home. So then my mom came and got me. But surveillance video from Walmart shows just Dante getting out of Kelsey's car. The morning of February 6th, this unknown man is seen walking to Kelsey Schelling's car, parked at the Southside Walmart, and is seen driving away with the car. We have no idea who that person was in that video. Who do you think that someone was that came back and drove that car away? You know, there are similarities to Dante, but it's nothing that we can 100% say that is the person who drove it away. On February 14th, Kelsey's car is found in Pueblo, but no Kelsey. Police start working backwards. They start going through surveillance video, and what they find is pretty surprising. Less than 12 hours after she would have arrived in Pueblo, surveillance video shows Dante in her car at an ATM in Pueblo. He's driving, and he takes $400 out of Kelsey's bank account. Dante is brought in for a second time by Pueblo police. And she dropped her off, and she dropped you off at Walmart. Where were you parked at? I mean, like, apparently you guys know, so, like, I don't understand why you, like, I told him one time, like, I don't, that's all I can say about it. She dropped you off, when was that again? Can I speak to a lawyer, please? Once he requests a lawyer, all questions come to a halt. How did you read that? as the possibility that he knows something. Dante is arrested on felony identity theft, but the charges are later dropped after investigators find out Kelsey occasionally gave him permission to use her bank card. He's released. He's, you know, living his life. Do we suspect foul play? Yes. Have we come up with a body? No. Dante is a person of interest in the fact that she's missing. Police speak to his mother about February 5th, the day Dante is seen on surveillance camera parking Kelsey's car at Walmart. Did you in fact pick Dante up? I did pick my son up. She gives Dante an alibi for February 6th, when that unknown man is seen moving Kelsey's car from the Walmart. No way that was him. <laughs> no way he was at home. I know my son. <laughs> it's not capable of without a body or any direct evidence that tells us something happened to her to a homicide you know it may happen one day but right now it's you know we haven't had any evidence to reclassify it kelsey's family grows frustrated with the investigation laura launching search party after search party that turned into justice walks what do we want Justice. around the Pueblo Police Department and the District Attorney's Office. We appreciate you all so much. Your support keeps us going. Coming up next. It was a homicide investigation in our eyes. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.